Now it's time for your top story this morning. It's been a week since the midterm elections and Hennepin County Sheriff Rick Stanick still hasn't conceded. It could all come down to a meeting this morning where the county canvassing board will review the vote totals and certify a result. Ellery McArdle is live outside the county government center this morning. So Ellery, is there a potential for a recount today? Yeah, well, good morning, guys. So that meeting is happening at 10 o'clock this morning in this building behind me, the Hennepin County Government Center. And really what this review is, is it's a formality. So what the canvassing board does is it, it looks at the votes, uh, the results from each precinct, and it makes sure that those results match up with those transmitted during the election. So in this tight race, you've got three-term Sheriff Rich Stanick up against Dave Hutchinson, who is a Metro Transit Sergeant. Hennepin County's website shows Hutchinson leading Stanick by at least 2,300 votes and at this point that's not enough to trigger a taxpayer funded recount. Stanick's campaign though could uh, if he wanted to he could uh, do a recount but he'd have to fund that himself but in terms of a recount you know it could change although it's not expected to do uh, expected to if for some reason the canvassing boards finds any major discrepancies but that's not expected at this point. So when we talked with Hutchinson last week he said Look, I won, you know, he wants Stanick to accept it so that he can move on as sheriff and just start with his duties. But last week, Stanick's camp had said, you know, we're going to wait until this Tuesday meeting to see once those results are certified, what really comes out of this. So after this meeting this morning, of course, our crew will be asking both sides what they think of the outcome. Back to you. All right, Ellery, thank you so much. Well, usually Chris. Here's a look at your morning rush. Target is stepping up to help victims of the California wildfires. The Minnesota based retailer is donating half a million dollars towards relief efforts. That includes food, clothes and other supplies to shelters, as well as distributing gift cards to local firefighters. Family and friends are mourning the loss of longtime owner of Brainerd International Raceway, Jed Copham. A raceway spokesperson confirmed Copham was swimming Sunday from his parents' boat in Fort Myers when he went missing. The 46-year-old's body was found the next morning. Copham and his wife have owned the raceway since 2006. A central Minnesota farm is doing their part to help those in need this Thanksgiving. This week, Edling Farms in Clear Lake donated 36,000 pounds of potatoes to the Union Gospel Mission in St. Paul. The organization will give out these potatoes as part of its food bags for families of five and the hot meals it will serve on Thanksgiving Day. Chris, thanks. It's 6.04 time now for Digital Dive this morning. And this photo is making rounds across the world this morning. It's out of Baraboo, Wisconsin. Now, it was taken last spring at prom. You can see a group of high school boys all doing the Nazi salute. This post has since been deleted. But as you can see, the post says, we even got the black kid to throw it up. And of course, a lot of people around the country condemning this, even both the Baraboo School District condemning it and uh, Wisconsin uh, Jewish groups condemning this photo as well. So of course, we've been getting a lot of comments, uh, even the Auschwitz Memorial, you guys, saying it's hard to find even words. This is why every single day we work hard to educate. We need to explain what is the danger of hateful ideology rising. Uh, some of local comments from some of you, Jaycott says, the photographer told him to do this, so they did it. No parents complain, just yuck. Then he says, boo to Baraboo. Leah says, what's the matter with the photographer? Teaching Nazi salute is wrong message. We are not going back. Uh, five guys who didn't salute, good for you. Kelly says, growing up in Baraboo, I can tell you it is one of the least diverse cities out there. I'm embarrassed to call it my hometown after this photo. Optics people, how can you not see how this looks? So yeah, let us know what you think about this photo by heading over to our CARE 11 Facebook page. Join the conversation, but everyone is condemning it. The city, of course, school district yeah, for sure. saying, you know, they're looking into it again. Like I said, it was from last spring, mm -hmm. last prom. So some of these students might have, you know, already graduated or maybe right. they're still students at the school district. So that was a professional photographer? Because when I first saw that, I thought it was just another kid. Who could be a parent? That. I don't know if it yeah, was a professional. Okay, so see, whoever, but... like the parents, usually it's parents that, you know, have the Yeah, yeah. Who should know better, 100%. So, and there yeah. were a bunch there. The whole thing is horrifying. And you just wonder, are these kids not getting the message? Through high school, they should have learned about the horrors yeah. of that and know that people, it's not really a joke. Yeah, a lot of people commenting towards the school district saying, what are you teaching them? Why yeah. isn't this part of the curriculum against right. you know racism? Mm -hmm. So they're addressing that, of course. Wow, interesting. All right, let's go to Sven with the one thing we need to know about the weather. Yeah, it's a cold start to the day. Single digit temperatures, wind chills below zero for several of us. We are going to have the sun all day long. That's the good news. Highs in the 20s, still colder than normal, but tomorrow and Thursday, we're talking about 40s. It's going to feel pretty nice.
Thanks, Sven. Well, check this out. Lucky numbers aren't chosen. Sometimes they find you. Example A, this baby here, that is Hugo Potts. She was born over the weekend on Sunday at the Mother Baby Center in St. Paul, and she arrived at 11, 11 p.m. on Sunday, the 11th in the 11th month. So it's 11, 11, 11, 11. So maybe her parents should head to Vegas there. Hugo, though, not a permanent name. It was an unusual name for a little yeah, girl. Yeah, i never her, heard that. Yeah, her parents didn't know if it would be a boy or a girl, so they're just still taking some time to figure out. Oh, so they had, like, Hugo picked, and, it were, yeah. and then they thought maybe it was going to be a boy, and a girl pops out, and then you're like, oh, well, Oh, this well, is what do we Hugo. name her? I don't yeah. know. So, yeah, good oh. luck to them. Congratulations. Yeah, I guess I can wait a little while and see, you know, what kind of name they think she grows into. She doesn't know. No, she won't know at all. Well, there's still more to come on Sunrise. You're going to tell us all about that, right? That's right, because if you use Lime scooters, you might want to just consider walking. The company now has a warning for their riders. Oh, no. And keeping our eyes up this morning, I went undercover with some local cops to find distracted drivers in the act. And we're doing some experiments with ice. We're talking about why ice is so important to the Arctic ecosystem coming up next.